live from Studio Emily. <laughs> um, all right, let's get going here. There we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're officially live here. Can you see me and hear me? Um, if you can, give me a thumbs up or say hello in the chat and um, let me know where you're coming from. I'm so excited to be on here tonight. And uh, I do have to say, I just love doing webinars. I love doing videos. Um, I like creating things for people that are fun for me and also fun for you. So um, welcome everybody. Thanks for being on here. So we have people from Florida, Georgia, um, East Coasters. I hope you guys are safe. I, I heard there was some sort of like earthquake. I don't know where it was, but you know, Facebook things travel like wildfire. Um, California. And um, well, also, if you wouldn't mind, um, please do feel free to share this with anyone that you think will benefit tonight. Um, I don't know how that works on these live videos, but if you hit share somewhere, um, it would be awesome. Um, just a nice way to reach out and maybe somebody else will feel called to join us on the live tonight. Um, or, you know, just find some of these videos and be, um, find some tools in them. So, um, hi everybody. Thanks for being on here. So we'll give everyone a couple of minutes and then we'll get started. Um, so if this is your first time on my live, feel free to say that this is your first time if you're a first timer. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about who I am, what I do, and, and um, just give you a little bit more insight into me. So I'm an intuitive and a spiritual teacher, and I'm also an author, um, a writer, and really just a magical human. Um, I have always been really intuitive since I was a kid. I'm very within the last 10 years started to feel spirit more around more um, in ways that I have never truly felt spirit around um, and also was a bit turned off by the whole idea of working with spirit you know it just took my whole awareness of life to a new level that I wasn't ready for at the time but you know there's something miraculous about spirit and spirituality and um, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's like one of these experiences that you either have it or you don't. And when you do, it's really hard to like turn back from, you know, it's, it's hard to turn back from an experience that feels so powerfully moving um, and hard to deny that isn't true, right? So for those of you who have this experience, probably all of you, um, or you felt some sort of like, strange intuitive feeling and then all of a sudden it comes true or it was some sort of eerie thought and then boom it's it's accurate um it's really hard to explain that kind of like phenomena but it is what it is right we have this ability to um connect to information in really mysterious ways in miraculous ways too so um for me it's been a really beautiful journey of surrender and healing and also, you know, challenging, like it's a challenging experience to be somebody who has gifts um, and also to feel them and to own them and to surrender to them and to be guided by my intuition and to live the life that I live, which is really an extremely intuitive life um, from the people that I meet, from my choice to move to L.A., creating an online business, uh, becoming an intuitive and a medium and writing several books to creating uh, mentorship programs. All of it has been an intuitive download from, from spirit and something that I would have totally missed out on had I not surrendered to it. I would have missed out on healing a lot of stuff in my life. I would have missed out on helping other people heal things in their lives and, and being a part of something super magical and, and beautiful. So, um, so that's kind of like my story in a nutshell. Um, I think that whenever you're in a really interesting stage in your life where you're called to a place that feels super, um, 
testing. It's like the universe is testing you. Uh, you are forced to look at your life on its head. You know, the way that you saw your life before and then all of a sudden now you, it's your universe, your little universe that you live in within the universe of life has now been turned upside down. And so I think that this is what happens to us several times in our lives, that we don't just have it once, we have it numerous times. Um, and we are in this experience of like, how can we see this situation now from a different perspective? How can we see ourselves from a different perspective? Um, because at some point, even in the, in the process of transformation, whether you're healing from a relationship or you're healing from loss or you're healing from, you know, family or abuse or trauma, whatever it is, it's your story. Um, it gets uncomfortable being in the comfort of misery or depression or anger or resentment. And so at that point, it's like the universe and we have to sort of like turn our heads to the side and be like, hmm, okay, this happened to me. This shit sucks. Uh, what do I do now? Because I know that I can no longer live my life this way, right? Um, and so that's, that's where the universe has taken me is it's turned me on my head <laughs> more times than I can count so much so that now I practice handstands and headstands because of it. So that I learn life from a new perspective <laughs> all the time. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's my story. And so here I am now teaching people how to do this for themselves, how to turn your life on its head and to see yourself from a new perspective, but also how to live your life without suffering. Um, and if you are suffering, how to live it in a way that at least you find some sort of peace and hope every day that you are still here. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people have told me, um, you know, I just feel called to do the work. So uh, there's so many people that have told me in their years following me or coming to me for, for insight or mentoring or guidance or whatever it is, um, that they have found their own peace, you know? And, and sometimes, you know, it's not, it doesn't come sometimes immediately like overnight right but then you know sometimes it comes slowly sometimes you do let something go immediately super fast like you just it hits you like boom like oh yeah it's time for me to let that go so tonight's webinar is related to this right because we're focusing on opening our hearts um and so how many of you that are watching tonight because we have a full house um have struggled with opening your heart or are in that struggle right now of opening your heart. Um, and if you are, feel free to type in yes or just share, um, you know, that this is where you're at right now in your life. Um, opening your heart can mean opening your heart to receiving love and support from strangers. Opening your heart can mean seeing yourself in a new way that you have not seen yourself before. Uh, where you see the truth of your flaws, right? The things that we, we cringe at, like, oh, God, I don't like that about myself. But the truth of the reality is that it kept you safe for some time, right? Um, it kept you safe because it, it was some sort of coping mechanism that, you know, told you that it wasn't safe to love or it wasn't safe to trust or whatever, whatever it is, whatever the story is. And so it's become like um, a security blanket that over time is ripped and torn. And maybe now you just have the shred of it left, but it's still there and you're still holding on to it because that's part of feeling secure, <laughs> right? So opening our hearts is about sort of like letting go or taking some space back from this belief that, you know what, I can't trust anyone, or it's hard for me to trust men or women, or um, it's hard for me to speak my mind, it's not safe for me to express myself, um, or I don't believe that I have any gifts. Um, so I'm closing myself off to this thought that I have gifts. 
uh, that I have something powerful inside of me. Um, sitting in my darkness rather than seeing what beautiful light I can create in my life and in my world and in the universe. Um, choosing, choosing that process over potentially, you know, um, a new idea or a new way of living. Um, and a new way of living isn't something that shows up overnight, right? And that's why we have coaches and we have mentors and we have influencers and we have the gym and we have certain diets out there and we have all these tools because it helps us to get back into the life we want to live, the way that we see ourselves living. And so there's these growing pains that happen, right? Because once we start opening our hearts up, the ego will freeze and freak out. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. Like I'm, I'm walking the line here, universe. I'm walking the line. Like I'm going out and I'm taking a risk. So you better be behind me. You better have my back. And if you don't, well then F you. <laughs> um, I've had those conversations. And so we take these risks, right? And then we get upset if like the moment we open our hearts up and then something doesn't work out the way that we thought it was supposed to. Um, and so then we shut it back down. Um, but the idea here is to like surrender. It depends on what you're walking into, right? If you're walking into the same battle that you've walked in your whole life and expecting somebody to be different, it's going to be a really unrealistic expectation to have. Um, so, and this goes to like with relationships a lot, right? Because we have these, those are the things we talk about the most in our lives. It's like this relationship with this, this relationship with this person. Um, and so there's this a moment in, in the experience where we have to look at, well, what is this person capable of giving me? What is what they've given me so far? And then where am I like, what am I w really willing to have or create with this other individual? So if they're not really willing or able to be a reliable source of comfort and love and support for you, then the proof is in the pudding. The results are there. So there is no more cause for suffering. It is only that you're choosing to hope and wish and pray that they will be something different. And the reality is they'll only be different when they're ready to see that what they're doing is harmful or painful to another human or even painful for themselves. And I can tell you, like, I've had this experience with several individuals in my life where I'm like, God, why don't they just change? Like, how can they live their lives like that? How can they live, like, treating people this way? But then I had, to, I was forced to look at myself in, like, ways of, like, oh, well, how do I treat people? You know, what are some of my, like, um, ways of being that I don't like about myself? Do I hide? Do I avoid communication? Do I shut down my heart when I feel scared? Or do I allow myself to express, hey, you know what? I'm feeling scared right now. So it's interesting that the things we expect from others, at some point we're challenged to also be those things. We're challenged that if we want that from another individual, we must also do that for ourselves. Um, and so does anyone have any thoughts on this? Does this resonate with you? And I'll give you a second to share because uh, I see that some people are sharing some pretty cool comments here. And also, if you're just on the live, feel free to share this with your friends or your community or anybody you think will benefit from this, this training. Um, and I'm going to get some water because I forgot to pour myself a glass. Um, so, let me just go. There we go. So, the whole process of opening our hearts is is actually to create less suffering for ourselves. So it's this process of, well, where am I like holding an expectation that is actually kind of not serving me? And am I being that? If I want a partner who is vulnerable, am I being vulnerable? If I want friends who um, are healthy and supporting me, am I being that way for myself? And so it's interesting that, you know, the things that we want from the world, we must also be willing to take that stand and do it for ourselves because then it becomes kind of unrealistic. It's like, well, if you want it, you also got to do it for you. 
And it's harder, right? It's harder said than done because then we're like, well, I'm alone and I don't have this in my life. I, I need somebody there to do it for me. Walk me and take me by the hand. And yes, if you reach out to the universe and you ask for guidance, there's going to be angels sent your way. Ones in spirit and then also like ones in physical, physical person. So it's interesting. I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but there have been moments in your life where you, um, you felt like you really needed support and you were at your lowest or you were at rock bottom, or maybe you're just in this huge life change. And then um, the universe sent you a really good friend or uh, somebody came into your life who became like a mentor um, or you were able to connect with a community of friends who ended up being super supportive of you in a big, you know, devastating loss or big change right um it's 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 like this energy that you know somebody answers the call and is like okay i'm going and somehow magically in, the, in synchronicity of life you you connect you 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 connect in some mystical way and where this person serves to be um a guide for you in the physical and also spiritually speaking Oh, yes. So um, I'm reading some of the comments here and people are saying, I think about that a lot. It seems like many people want to tell you how to walk the walk, but they're not willing. They're not willing to walk their talk. Yeah. Um, and it's true, right? Because we're also, it's, it's so much easier to give advice than to do it for ourselves. Like all the time you find yourself jumping up like, oh, well, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. But then there's a second one you have to stop and be like, wait a minute, let me take my own advice and do it for me. Um, and that, and that's maybe a gift, you know, that's part of the process is like you have this gift to help others. Um, but also there's a moment in where you have to stop and pause, like, wait, like, I don't, like, am I doing it for myself? Let me make sure that I'm also doing it for me. So it becomes an ongoing practice of um, taking care of yourself and then others around you. Um, and someone else is sharing, it's so hard to be treated bad and often it is relatives who can be so hard and not nice at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially with family, you know, there's all kinds of stories with families who are not always the healthiest or functional homes, um, or they lack boundaries or the skills to be better humans to each other. Um, I can definitely relate to that, you know, um, watching my parents in an unhealthy relationship for now, even to today is, you know, I'm, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but at this point I've let go of the thought that why don't they treat each other better? That's because they don't know any better. And until you don't know, you don't know. And then you don't know until you don't know. And then it's a constant relationship to knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more powerful you are. And the more tools you have. Because the more tools you have, the easier it is for you to live your life best authentically to you without worrying about another individual and what they will say or do or treat you and how they will. Because then you know where your relationship to them stands. You know that not all humans suck, but some do. Some don't know any better. Um, it is that phrase, you know, ignorance is bliss, but it is true. Um, there is truth to it and that we all are ignorant in our own ways and that we don't know things until we know. And it's, it's like, I've had many realizations about things in my life where I've shut my heart down and then I realize, oh my God, I'm just doing the same thing that was done to me, but in a different way. I am now, now keeping another human away because uh, it's safer for me to stay in this mindset than it is for me to potentially open my heart and trust that another human would want to care and love me in a completely different way than this person. But the trauma that sometimes lives from relationships that, you know, put a bitter stain on our uh, energy is that uh, it's hard for us to think that maybe other good people are out there. And that's when I was saying that the universe will send you good people in your life if you're willing to trust that those people can be good people. And then as you trust yourself, 
no longer is this, well, what am I going to do if they hurt me? Yeah, you'll have those thoughts. But at the same time, you'll also know that you are stronger than you were before. And so you no longer put your faith in the wrong people. Um, and you become the person that you want to be. Um, and then your faith goes into people who show up for you and are consistent and are stable and show love and are healthy individuals and value that, right? You'll notice that uh, you will start to align with different individuals who are not the same as before. And that's because that's a sign that you no longer need that. It's not the, that's not the um, home that you wish to go to anymore, you know? So I was talking about this with a friend of mine and um, the, just the other day before we, we move into the meditation here, I was talking about this with my friend and I said the thoughts that we have in our heads about other people and ourselves, if we're capable of love or receiving love or giving love or we're not good enough or we're not trusting, we can't ever trust anyone um, or that everyone will hurt us or whatever your thoughts are. Uh, that you're not beautiful. Those are those are thoughts that you weren't born with. Those are thoughts that somehow have been downloaded into your consciousness. And so then if you think about it, if you're thinking like in the sense of all the good thoughts you could have about yourself and all the loving things you could have about other people who have showed up in your life um, that debunk these theories and these myths that these these concepts are true, right? Who is the friend who was there for you? or, you know, was by your side, or the relative that picked you up, or different people along your journey that, you know, maybe helped you for a day, or have been there the whole, whole, you know, years of your life. Um, it is, a, it debunks all of these stories that make th those old beliefs real and true and keep you safe. Um, and so it's kind of like coming home, you have the choice to go home to the thoughts that make you feel like crap and, and keep you down. You're, you'll never be good enough, that you don't have any gifts, um, that you're making it up, that you're this or you're that or whatever it is that your mind tells you. Um, that you'll never meet anybody, you'll be alone forever, uh, you, you can never move forward. Whatever it is that you know your mind has created now from this experience um, and then all of the other thoughts about you that are negative it's like you're coming home to this house and you're sitting in it and you're choosing to sleep there versus going home to the house that is uplifting and loving and joyful and caring and compassionate and kind. And so what are the thoughts that are kind to yourself? What are the thoughts that you have that are loving towards yourself? What are the thoughts that are hopeful? What are the thoughts that, um, support your very being in this universe and say, you know what, actually that's not true. I've had some really good relationships or I've had some really good friends who've come along my way. Or you know what, I actually do treat myself pretty good sometimes, you know, or I don't always believe that about myself. I've had these moments where I felt spirit around or I've had these moments where I felt intuition around or I've known that the universe was looking out for me. Um, and so we have these choices to go into these two homes in our minds. Um, and so it's, it becomes this experience of practice where you can go into your home that, you know, that, that's well and comfortable, but also misery, like misery loves comfort. Um, or you have the choice to go into the other home and get to know it and decorate it and start to, to lean into it and feel it. Um, it's really interesting that we, we can, we can choose. And so you have the option to go sit here in this story or stories that have served you so far but also have kept you from living your true potential or living a life that you really are in love with and also being in love with yourself or you have the choice to go into a life that you potentially could be really be in love with and also powerful and strong in um yeah so it's through through the practice of new new uh, action, new action, and also new thought breeds new action. So if I'm telling myself every day that I'm ugly, then I feel no motivation to uh, look at myself in the mirror, to dress in a way that might make me feel beautiful, um, or 
be around people who value me or see my beauty. And so I might isolate or just think that I'm too ugly for the world. If I start working with the thought of, I might not even believe that I'm beautiful for a long time, but maybe there's this motivation in me to like, you know what, I kind of just want to change like what I'm wearing. You know, maybe one day I find a dress that inspires me. Or maybe there's a woman that inspires me who's very much in touch with her femininity. And so I might try, um, you know, a dance class or some sort of like inspirational movement class. Um, or I start connecting with a tribe of women more who are inspiring to me. Or I start reading books on women who, um, you know, have struggled with their image, but also found self-love. So there's this new thought pattern or hope or idea that maybe there's this part of me that doesn't believe that to be 100% true because I'm obviously leaning towards a completely different idea. Like I'm going more towards this is, this is something I'm curious about, you know, and that's where it starts. It starts with this curiosity to think differently, to believe differently because there's a part of you that knows differently, that knows that that thought is not real. It only was real for a period of time until it no longer is real. Okay. And you don't, we won't know how to be different. The how isn't important is the doing. So it, sitting and in that state of closing down and shutting down is what you know to be familiar. But going and doing something completely opposite of that is where there is a blossoming process, there is a seed that is planted, there is new growth, and there's new opportunity to experience life differently from the stories that you're sitting in in your head. And it actually, actually activates healing. So in the growing pains of it, it's going to be super uncomfortable. You'll feel super uncomfortable, but there will also be a moment where you'll have kind of an affirming from the universe of like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I might do that again. I might like, you know, maybe that's not true. And so it becomes this like completely like slow, gradual process of, changing that belief system or that thought or that experience that all people are going to hurt me because this one person hurt me and so now everybody's going to do it to me. That's insane. There's no way. The only way that it will be true is if you make it to be true and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and I used to think that way. So for the longest time, for years, I thought I couldn't trust anybody and that that everybody would just hurt me in the same way that I'd experienced great devastation and pain with my family. And over time through just honestly, you just ha like fighting through it. You know, it's a story in your head that constantly replays like a tape over and over and over again. Um, at some point it's like, all right, like I don't want to live my life with this freaking tape that's on repeat. So I need to do something else. What, what else can I do? How can, what, what am I missing that is not there right now? And, you know, I looked at my life from a bird's eye view and realized I really needed to feel super supported and loved and have an amazing support system in my life. And that involves people with knowledge and mentors and teachers and my, my relationship to, um, to a higher awareness, a higher knowledge. And so that's where I found great peace uh, was moving my body and and having tools there that supported a completely different thought process because I wasn't going to heal if I kept sitting in that story. There, that would be preventing me from literally moving forward. I would just stay in that story for the rest of my life. So I'm not saying that this is true for everyone, but I am saying that we choose, you know, some of the things that happen to us, we have no control over, but we do have choice in whether or not we will allow ourselves to heal and possibly get our legs again and walk in a different way or stay 
here in the trenches of yesterday. All right. So let's move on. <laughs> um, any thoughts about that? Any questions? Any ideas? Um, is this serving you? Is this resonating with you? Um, is this something that you're finding some sort of message from, from the universe in for yourself? Okay. Um, wonderful. Well, I'm happy to share it with you because it's something that um, sits well with me and has taken me a lot of time. And I'm still, still in that journey of, of surrendering and trusting every day. I've discovered that in order for me to truly heal, I have to be uncomfortable every single day of my life, probably for a, a, at least another five to 10 years. Um, you know, and healing from years and years of witnessing abuse, experiencing abuse as a kid to unhealthy relationships in my early 20s, um, all of that put me in a very, like, place of discomfort, um, but also comfort and like, oh, I'll just have this mindset forever, you know, that will just keep me safe and then I'll never have to worry. But then it was making me unhappy and miserable. So the, the reality of the situation was like, I don't want to have that mindset anymore. I want to believe there are good humans in the world and I want to believe in myself. I want to be a good human. And so um, it literally has been a journey of like, okay, I'm going to be super uncomfortable in this healing process. I'm going to be uncomfortable because it's like I'm learning how to like fly from this nest that I have built for myself to feel safe, even though it's made me super unhappy. Um, and it's required me to like open my heart again and to love someone again and to love someone and trust that they will love me and that also that they will not try to like intentionally hurt me or, or abuse me, right? And so it's kind of like that animal that comes around your house. We have this stray cat that comes around here who I think was abused and she comes around but she's always very skittish and takes her a little while to warm up to you. But once she does, she's just this ball of warm fuzziness. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's similar. Like we all have our little hurts, big, small, whatever they are, their wounds. And we just, we get to treat them with tender love and kindness. And as we treat that wound with tender love and kindness, you know, new experiences happen and suddenly we can live with more love in our in our hearts and we can trust the world and we can trust people again. And we also know who not to trust. Like, okay, I can't really trust this person. And that's okay. You know, that's a relationship that I'm not going to be very intimate with or very close to. That's somebody I'm not going to be drawn to, you know, really relying on to be there for me, you know, because they're, they can't really be there for anybody, but not even for themselves. Yeah. Okay. I think I can turn on the light here. Okay. Um, okay. So let's do our heart healing meditation, guys. So um, whatever you're doing, um, just feel free to plant your feet firmly on the ground. And we'll just get started. And... Go ahead and start to, interesting, um, close your eyes and imagine that you are stepping into soft soil of the earth. And you can start to feel that soil of the earth, the coolness of the earth underneath your feet. Can you imagine a time on when you walk the earth as a child or at any moment in your life, is there a memory that comes to your mind of when you walked on fresh cut grass or fresh soil? The mist of the earth on the soil. 
the way that the blades of the grass feel beneath your feet and through your toes. And feeling that love and support from the earth beneath you, that innocence of life, and that underneath that there is an entire universe happening. And as you feel that energy beneath your feet and that support of the soil, and the innocence of life, begin to imagine that there is a ribbon of light that streams down from the universe, like a DNA strand, it streams down and it begins to swirl around you and connects you to the ancient mystics of life and to the ancient energy of the earth, the ancient energy of the soil, the connection to the seasons to fall and the harvest, to winter and hibernation, spring, meaning rebirth, and summer, a time of expansion and growth and play. And just like the seasons, everything moves in a cycle. There's a period of letting go of things that no longer serve the earth, a time of reflection and restoration, and then new growth and new blossom. And then a time to just be in the sun. And begin to bring that same consciousness and that awareness to your heart center I want you to notice how your heart looks. If you were to see an image of your heart, does it look lively? Is it vibrant? Is it cold like the winter? Covered in frost? Are there speckles of grass that are starting to emerge, indicating healing? Maybe little seeds that life could be different. That you could be different. Or are you in a period of autumn where there is change and beauty in the change? Changing of old thoughts and old patterns. Noticing what the thoughts are that hold you back in your life. That make you feel small. That keep you from truly loving people. That keep you from truly loving yourself. Can you feel that ache or that pain that still might be residing there? The person that did that to you. The loss of that relationship. The betrayal or the disappointment. Has it left a bitter taste in your mouth? Or does your heart start to feel light, like the sun, open and ready, beaming light to the universe, beaming light to the world? Without judgment, just notice how your heart feels. And also notice what is still attached that is getting in your way is it the thought that things could have been different 
Are you still beating yourself up over it? Are you punishing someone for it? Are you punishing yourself? And so the image of your heart also begins to dissolve into an image of you as a child. Notice how you are as a child. Were these same thoughts and beliefs and feelings there? Did you have those same fears of the world like you do now? And again, beginning to bring in that image of the seasons around your little self. How does he or she feel at this stage in life? And what season are you in? Bright like the sun. Cold and fearful like the winter in hibernation, withdrawn. Or are you blossoming into your beauty, your innocence, like the spring? Or perhaps you're not sure and you're in a period of learning, of change. Without judgment, begin to imagine that same ribbon of light that came down from the universe, opening you up to all of the potential seasons of your heart. Begin to imagine that same ribbon of life. light also comes in around your little self, bringing in all of the things that you needed then. love or support, encouragement, motivation, safety, acknowledgement, and approval. Now bring into your mind where you feel stuck. Is it an experience? Is there a person who has wronged you? Or is it you that has wronged you? Can you bring forgiveness? There is a phrase that forgiveness is simply knowing that there was no other way. But this is how the story was told. This is how this experience was created. And where are you holding on to your own thoughts that need forgiving? Can you allow yourself to forgive you? Beginning to bring in again that image of the ribbon of light that comes in from the universe. A star dust energy. 
And like magic, it ignites something in you. It brings you a message about this experience today. And it also enters your heart. It begins to stir the energy that is stagnant here. What does your heart need most right now for it to be alive? This energy brings that to you. Knowing that you're safe and supported by the universe and that you always have the direction and the guidance from your intuition. And your soul. When you're ready, I want you to answer this mantra in your mind. I am. And notice what the universe brings in. Who are you before it all happened? And let that be a mantra that stays in your heart. Knowing that you always have this power inside of you. And start to bring your awareness back into the room, back into your body. Remembering that we started with the image of the soil, so bringing your awareness now back to the soil. Feeling the cool earth beneath your feet. Maybe the smell of fresh cut grass or the stickiness of the grass. Can you find more space in your heart than you had before we started? Can you allow more light and life in? Can you give yourself permission to be what you were before everything happened? with grace and support, knowing you're always guided. So when you're ready, go ahead and just begin to open your eyes and come back to the here and now. Okay, welcome back everyone. Thanks for being here. That was such a cool meditation. Um, I'm just taking some notes from it. How are we feeling? We went on a journey, didn't we? Super powerful. So I'll give everyone a chance to comment. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna take a couple of notes from that experience.
Ah, deep breath. That was so good. Um, so does anybody want to share? We have somebody saying beautiful meditation. Shoo. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Meditations are really powerful. Um, you know, I think in the beginning journey of, of my life, of my spiritual journey, I struggled a lot with talking about things that had happened. Um, I felt I felt a lot of different emotions and fear around talking around about anything that had happened in the past. And so it lived inside of me and I found a lot of peace in meditating. Like I felt like I could put it somewhere and I felt safe. Um, and, and so meditating, I think, is a really good tool in the beginning of the healing journey um, because sometimes it's hard for us to, to talk publicly or even write about, about stuff that's happened um, or we feel shame or anger or resentment, whatever it is, you know? And so, um, these meditations can be super powerful because at least we're somewhere in the subconscious place of our minds and doing some very deep work, whether it's for 15 minutes. Sometimes people do 15 minute meditations and they can ride that feeling for a week or a really long time, you know? Um, and so it kind of like reaffirms what you already know to be true about yourself, but you got to sort of get out of your own way and let yourself tell you that you are okay. Right. Um, and so the story is like the ego gets, hushed while we're in meditation um, and it's like the volume gets turned down or sometimes volume gets turned up but we, then we see how much of like the story that we're living in is so loud that it's it's clouding everything else that is in the way right that's a uh, really interesting huh um, so I highly recommend doing meditations um, and studying with people uh, because it helps a lot with with the healing journey and it helps a lot because then you have you have support and you have a team and you have friends and you have your tools and um, I think it, it helped me a lot in facing stuff I didn't really want to face anymore I was like oh I'm over it you know but it was only in the facing of it that I got profound healing. So it's kind of like you, you have to sort of brave your own storm and go into these places, but knowing you're not alone, like knowing you'll be safe. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, anybody? So this training went on a little bit longer than I and anticipated it would go. I was hoping I would have more time to, to do messages. Um, so I think what I'll do instead is maybe pull some Oracle cards for people. Um, how does that sound? Because I, I think that this was a lot of energy for me to hold the space to do the meditation and then also do um, the, the lecture before. Um, and so I think, oh, uh, well, let me just sit with that for a second. Hmm. All right. Well, um, we'll just work with spirit. <laughs> so that's part of the journey. Uh, that's my logical brain. Um, so yeah, we'll do some spirit messages. Um, I think there's a couple of people here who would like to talk to their loved ones who are here tonight, which is funny. All right. Um, 
So, okay. So, um, I don't know why this is coming up. I, I feel really weird talking about this, but um, there has to be like someone. There's a woman in spirit who comes in. I, I, I don't know if her name is Mags or Margaret, maybe, or M.A. I feel like she has to go by some type of nickname, like Mags. Does anybody have a lady in spirit with this name? <laughs> um, or Babs? Um, yeah, there's this woman who is coming in, and she's very like, uh, okay. She's got a personality on her for sure, I'll say that. Yeah, she's, she's got this really strong personality. She doesn't feel shy. She feels like very outgoing. I, like almost like, I feel like very, super like feminine energy with her. Um, like really strong perfume. Um, Yeah, the, I, I just throw it out there first before I go any further. Um, can anyone relate to this information? Because she's got like, there's definitely, it's definitely a woman. She's got like this nickname. It's either like Babs or Mags. And she's not shy. She's got more of like a very outgoing nature to her. Um, and I feel, I keep like this really strong smelling perfume, like, yeah, I think like she must have been known for her perfume. It's just like, she might sometimes may put too much on or it's just like, like, uh, yeah. That's all I'm gonna get. I'm not. That's all I'm gonna say for now because I don't want to like go any further if nobody even knows who she is. So somebody watched this video the other day, and actually the message was for someone who watched the video, which is interesting. Um, so uh, does anybody relate to this information? I have an aunt Margaret who passed away about six months ago. That was also called March. That's, okay. Um, would you been? very outgoing like did she have um oh it's hi kathleen <laughs> we talked earlier today <laughs> didn't we yeah <laughs> um that's funny um <laughs> i saw her name i was like wait a minute i know this lady <laughs> um did she have a like a really strong like smelling perfume or like smell to her <laughs> so weird <laughs> um and also super like outgoing woman she doesn't come like to me as like shy at all like she's got this very like outspoken demeanor to her um yeah she was very outgoing i have a step-grandmother marilyn who always wore a lot of perfume I don't know if she had a nickname. Okay. Hmm. Well, just keep that in mind, Laura. We'll just work with her for a second. She was very outgoing. So you can relate to a lot of this information. Um, anything to do with her, like, sense, like, the perfume part is not familiar. She's very, she was not shy. She was very, okay. Okay. Well, let's just see where we're going here with this. Um, is there anything to do with her being very busty between these two women here? Um, Cause I feel like I'm seeing like very busty. Uh, yeah. Very busty chest. 
Um, or, 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 yeah, like that's how she's showing it to me. It's very busty, <laughs> very outgoing. Okay. I, I just a second here. <sighs> it's kind of hard with these lives. Um, all right, I'm just going to run through the information one more time. Um, it's definitely a woman in spirit. I, I do know that she's got this like M. That was the initial thing she showed me was M.A. name. Um, she's super outspoken. And she kept, she's taking me a lot to like her chest area and like, either that she was very busty in her chest. Um, and could, could have had some, I don't know. I don't know about that. I just know I'm. I know that I'm seeing like busty chest, and her uh, hair looks like a brown or a black. Yeah. Even the way she dresses feels very like outgoing or outlandish or something about her feels very like, um, just over the top, <laughs> like so. Her whole like look and feel to her feels very over the top. Um, so I don't know if anyone can make that strong perfume. Um, anyone relate to these two things here? I don't know if Kathleen, this is your aunt. Um, Marilyn has blonde hair. She's very eccentric, but not brown hair. Maybe this is for you, Kathleen. Blonde, not brunette. Oh, we lost her with the hair, didn't we? No! <laughs> okay, so that definitely, let's just put her hair away. <laughs> Would there be anything, like, maybe, like, a, it has it's just something about her hair. I know that. Um, like she keeps kind of, like, doing her hair and, like, this feeling of it. Like, the way that she shows up in life feels very, like, outlandish. Like, super out, um like the, from the way she dresses to the way she is like she doesn't come to me as like this shy lady um and also just like her whole clothing and everything it just feels super like out bold okay got it yes very bold um and not afraid to be herself yes okay um uh, could the could the ma have been the word ma no no i don't know i don't feel like that's i don't know mm, uh, no okay i'm just gonna go really quickly here with her because she's let me just ask her for something else really fast okay um there's a like a uh-huh some sort of tube that goes into her uh, throat or something here. She keeps showing me like, like a, something to do with a tube, like maybe a feeding tube or a tube. Um, Kathleen, was your aunt like? She, did she have anything in her chest or um, did she need like a tube or, or something to do with with? Yeah, because I keep seeing this like being in the hospital and there's like this tube that goes down her like in her nose or down her throat or, or I don't know if they were trying to remove fluids from her um, or anything to do with that, but okay. So we can't place her a hundred. I don't feel like I'm with a, it's hard. I, I don't see any of this really coming up strongly for me so okay um i'm gonna move on from her because she's not there's nothing really that's she did have tubes to help her breathe when she was in the hospital okay mm -hmm. um i feel i feel like i'm possibly with you kathleen I'll have to see if there's something she wants to say because like this lady, whoever she's for, I mean, maybe she's several people here can relate to her, but she's definitely like a very outgoing woman. Um, and she, she doesn't feel like a mother in spirit. It feels like she's 
definitely some sort of relative and I know that she keeps talking about um, having tubes and like going here uh, so I know that like her passing um, feels like it's a bit of a process and I don't feel like she was really happy about being in the hospital like she's got this like yeah like I, I, I something here I don't want to stay with her too long because this is like a strange connection. So what I'll do is I'll just give the message from her and perhaps it will resonate to some of the people here. Um, she had emphysema. I see. Okay. That might make sense as to why she, this lady kept bringing me up to like her chest. Um, did you say anything about her being busty? Big chest, perfume part, very outgoing. This lady says big hair. No. Blonde, not brunette centric mm. well okay I understand got it um, so the message here that I feel that she's coming forward about which may relate to several people here um, is about living large in life and I got it. okay like not letting um, your circumstances uh, dictate how how big of a life you can have um, so there's this feeling of like letting your presence be known and letting uh, people know who you are like having a life that is large for you because she's got this really like large presence about her I know that she's like here um, and she she like even just being sick and and having this physical limitation like I feel like she's got this really strong like warrior spirit to her it's very like strong um very determined feeling about her and um even even if she was sick or something like I, I feel like that still wouldn't have like crushed her so i really feel like this is about just living large and, and not letting the circumstances of of your life uh keep you small um I'm gonna leave that with the people here with these two three two women because I am having a hard time really placing her and I don't want to like keep drag this on for everybody else so um, but I know that she's really quite an amazing woman and and very very uh, persistent that's the word yes she's just very like in your face and um, doesn't hide there's nothing about her that that hides um, She's just got just wonderful uh, outgoing energy and, and would have always been this way even as she got older. Um, okay, so, all right. I'm a little scared to go further. It's like this, this link wasn't so strong and so I, I feel like I want to let's see if there's anybody who might come through with a little bit more clear information. Otherwise, I'll just start to close it down because I might be just a bit tired from doing all of these different things over this uh, hour together. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to close it here. And then what I'll do um, is pull some Oracle cards for people. I think that's a good, good stopping point there. Um, and let the energy of that settle um, and so we thank this wonderful lady who came through with very large presence and uh, her name and um, very interesting so okay dog's so cute. Oh, hi, Scarlett. <laughs> so, the thing about messages is, um, it's good to, like, if this was a longer event, like, we would take a break and, like, come back and reset and regroup and stuff. Because um, for, for doing, like, spirit messages, um, you want to be able to like hold the link pretty fresh and since I lectured and then did a meditation um, and then try doing mediumship after all that's like the the brain is, is already like 
somewhat in a different space, like, okay, let's take a rest for a second. Um, and so that's why sometimes before when I do other things, I'll do like a shorter lecture or jump into to the message work, which is, it's always different every time. It doesn't really matter. It is what it is. It serves its purpose. Mm, okay. Um, so I just wanted to see if there's somebody here who had wanted an Oracle card pulled for them. Um, let's see. So if you do, I will pull some for the first few people that comment here. So if you do, just type in yes, and then I will pull some cards for you. <sighs> okay. Okay. Um, Laura's fell out. <laughs> Laura's yours fell out. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> um, okay, so we'll do some, we'll do some, we'll break up, break it up a little bit here. Okay, so, um, the never ending story. Interesting. Hmm. So Laura's your card. I love these cards, by the way, the Colette Baron Reed wisdom Oracle cards are so cool. So Laura, your card is the never ending story. Um, hmm. Which when I look at her, there's this feeling of like exasperation of um, kind of repeating literally the same story in your head. Um, or this inability to really like move forward. Um, and wondering like if things will get better or if um, you will feel free, like this feeling of, of like, when do I get to come into my own or when, when is there this opportunity for my own happiness um, and yeah, it's interesting too. It's like, uh, this also this feeling of, of like waiting on others to change in order for you to change. Um, and so the, the message here isn't really about waiting on the world to change. It's really about you just becoming the change and then you will see exactly what you need to see with that experience feels much more related to like, for, like relationships with family, um, personal, very intimate relationships here. Um, it feels like there's kind of like two relationships that I keep seeing sort of being dragged on. Um, one feels like a relative. I don't know if you have some sort of responsibility to a relationship that you feel like you need to be responsible for. Um, but it, it's almost like I get the sense of, of re, uh, re, re, rechecking like why you are still holding that responsibility um, and owning that if you want to be committed to this relationship that you are in it because you want to do it um, not because nobody else will do it or um, or you know that you're the only person for the job it's that the fact of the matter is that you are a very kind-hearted person who truly cares in helping other people and so there has to be a balance when you look at, well, I'm only giving because I, I'm hoping one day this person will be different. No, it's at this point, it's going to be, why are you in the relationship? Are you, are you in the relationship because you care and you want to have this relationship with this individual? Um, and so your sense of obligation then begins to change because then you know that it's coming from a place of giving unconditionally um, versus giving and then hoping for a different result. Um, and so that's where this feeling of changing the story to now serving who you really are at your core and then and finding finding what your boundary is with that in your life um, so that it doesn't feel like you're carrying dead weight, um, but that you've actually given 
this a purpose that this now is something that you see as like a part of you where it's like, okay, uh, this relationship, this person may not be different. Um, I may never see this individual change in the ways of that I hope to. Um, but I do know that I'm not going to walk away from it because I do feel that uh, there's, there's this person that I care about. And so my relationship to them will be, will be this instead. Um, so there's a freeing energy that comes in and a sense of liberation for yourself um, that once you own your part and then also own uh, what you're willing to give and also let go of what you think you'll receive, there will be a lot more freedom in this relationship with you. Um, it's definitely one that I feel has taken up a lot of time in your life and a lot of space in your head. And it's one that um, you've sort of carried on as this obligatory thing, like as if the universe will not show support in another way for this person, um, which ends up becoming a very disempowering feeling for you and this person. So um, it's almost like the universe is asking you to surrender this old story or this old thing that you're telling yourself is, is required of you. And uh, now looking into uh, what is it about you that is of service in this relationship and what is it, where is it where you draw the line? And then you'll, it's like a freeing yourself of, of being, of it being any different. Um, and actually it shows you how compassionate of a human you are and how kind of a person you are. And once you see that, then you'll see that you have so much power in that because then you'll, you'll be drawn to giving your energy to other people in a way that will serve, um, that will, that you'll see the, 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 like the grace of your efforts, that it will come back like tenfold, um, which is very exciting. So there's this feeling of kind of laying down this old story that you have been holding on to. Um, and it's kind of like, all right, well, you're, it's, you're done with that. It's not for you anymore. Um, and that you own your part in it, that you love this person so much that you felt this way of being for them. And then also uh, stepping back and realizing that you will have this obligation in the way that you do. And then you'll also be shifting out of the, an expectation for it to be different because it will no longer be something that will cause you as much suffering as it has cost you. So it actually feels very freeing and very, to me, very exciting. I feel like there's really great change like coming in, into this relationship and you stopping thinking that it will be different. It will be something exactly as it is. Like the writing is on the wall. And so now you get to be free from that. Um, so once you own your relationship to this person and surrender, hmm, surrender some sort of resentment and anger, then I get this feeling that everything is going to change. Feels really good to me. I feel lots of light and energy around it. So we won't go into too many details there with that, but I hope that that resonates with you. Um, it feels very important in like your growth is like finally just owning who you are and then also looking at, Hmm, I've put so much time in this relationship that obviously it's somebody that I care about, but I also feel like the universe is calling you to serve humanity now in a completely different way, uh, in the way that speaks true to you, like your kindness and your compassion is going to come through like grace and effort with helping others um, because you have a heart that is of service. All right, let's see where else we can go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brenda. All right. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> so this one is um, for Brenda. 
Brenda Rowan, I think. Where is she? Oh, no, wait. I think I missed Johnson. Brenda Johnson. Uh, okay. Brenda Johnson. Is she still on here? Um, okay. So Brenda Johnson, the card that came up for you is all that glitters. I don't know if you can see it, right? Can you? Yeah. Um, and this one's really interesting. This card is all about... Okay. Um, putting your energy in stuff that I feel is distracting. Like there's a sense of like uh, investing time and effort in, I don't know if these are f it's like friendships or, or um, it's kind of the outside world actually. So there's like stuff on the outside that may have been distracting that I almost feel like you might be coming out of. So it's either that the world that you wanted to live in or like the idea of a vision or something on the outside uh, is like I'm pulling back from and I'm being challenged to like reassess what I really want in my life. Is it is it what everybody else has? Is it what I thought, is that really what it is? Or um, is it finding like your own gifts inside of you? Um, and so there's this like connection to pulling back from the outside world and going within and starting to see that everything that makes life beautiful is, is there already within you. So I almost feel like there's this calling to like come back to uh, your gifts, like coming back to what makes you this really unique and powerful individual um, and, and, and like letting go of looking for the answers in, in others and, and starting to turn into what is my inner, inner heart saying? What is my intuition saying? Um, and trusting that, trusting that you also have something within you to uh, give and receive. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm missing the comments here, but if, if you're on here, feel free to reply. Um, I don't know if she's on here, but so anyway, um, so that's the energy that I'm getting is like, uh, letting go of like the outside distractions and, and like coming within, like coming back to your center and finding your own source of abundance and, and love and like wealth within you. Um, and there's like a lot of like distracting energy. I, th I really, it must be like just something that like either a lot of people want your energy or this like thinking more about others and less about yourself. So that's, that's where I feel called is to like, you don't have to give up thinking about others, but finding that balance between, uh, between your relationship to others and then also your relationship to you. So, um, the distractions are getting like in the way of you, um, remembering like just how beautiful you are. Like there's this, a sense of like, it's not shiny object syndrome and that I want whatever, like all these things, but it's, it's like what occupies your time or who occupies your time. And then like turning within and, and sitting and, and, and realizing that, you know what, I think I'm, I'm investing my time too much in this. Um, and it's not really bringing me any closer to feeling love or worthiness. So there's a relationship here about worthiness um, and you reconnecting to your sense of worth and validation, but not through those distractions, but more through what brings you joy and light and love. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on now. Um, so I'll leave that with you. Uh, that feels really nice. Um, I feel a lot of excitement around that, but also just too, it's like a bit of a growing pain. It's like this, this feels really hard. Like this feels like it's a bit of a process for you to, to accept it and then also like let it go. So yeah, there's like this acceptance that comes in. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, I want to do two more and then we're going to keep going. I want to close. Um, let's see here. 
Is Amy Amy on here? Amy. Amy Nichols. Do you have a son by any chance, Amy? Amy, do you have a son? There's like a message about a kid. Okay. Um, I feel like there's a message about, about your son. This is not coming from a card. Um, I don't feel like he's in spirit, so this definitely feels like a son you have who is alive. Uh, you do, okay. Um, I get this uh, impression that there's... Hmm. I don't know if you've been like feeling some worry about him or... Yeah, because to me the message is like just for you to know that he's being supported. Um, there's a lot of like uh, making sure he's like on the right track or the right path, uh, and, and and like keeping keeping him focused. Um, this feeling of like coming in and, and making sure that he's making the right choices and staying uh, supported by the universe and by you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, I know he's alive. Thank you. Um, okay. So, um, I don't want to go, I've just kept getting a lot of energy around your son and that there's a lot of like connection to um, supporting him in his like future path and direction. A lot of like coming in and, and being there for him. And also like knowing that there's people in spirit. Uh, feels like a father figure. Could be a grandfather. I'm not sure. I just know that I keep seeing this gentleman in spirit very much around him. Um, and also as like a guide or like a mentor for him right now. Um, yes, father. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to leave that with you because it feels like it's, to, it's important for you to know this, that, that he's being looked out for and that he's being cared for. Um, and also like with future direction and purpose. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of like energy around purpose with him right now. So just know that, um, that there's clarity for that and for you as well with just knowing he's gonna be okay. Um, so there's definitely this like father-like spirit who comes forward and shows me like, He's like looking out for him and like by his side, like walking with him, which is really cool. Um, and, and just uh, like a lot of love and support from him. Okay, so I'm gonna let that go and then I'm gonna do one more. Um, where are we going here? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going, universe? Okay, uh, Lisa Mac. Govern. Is she still on here? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Lisa McGovern. Lisa McGovern. Mm. Really nice energy around her. Wow, that's cool. Is she still on here? So, I hope she is. She got a really interesting card. Uh, Lisa McGovern. Uh, okay, so her card is the Yang card, which is the number one card. And um, the Yang card for you, Lisa, is all about um, tapping into your masculine 
and starting to take like action. Oh, also too, um, interesting, I just got this, um, is surrendering some of the masculine. So you may have been spending like a lot of time like in your masculine or doing, 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 um, and there's this feeling of giving some of that a rest and letting the universe sort of like bring the masculine to you, <laughs> which is so interesting. Um, like there's definitely like the support of like bringing the masculine to her um, and trusting that the masculine will come. So that may mean that it's part, part of this time is for you to receive support from other people um, and also like know that you don't have to go and do it all yourself, um, that there is like people by your side that want to support you um, and trusting, trusting that there are individuals who want to be there and like do things for you or help you or like just be a good friend or be an ear or be supportive towards you. Um, so it's really like a message about not doing it all yourself. Um, so you may have been sort of walking this path of doing it all yourself or like staying attached to being in the masculine. Uh, out of survival um, and so there's this kind of like push towards surrendering the masculine um, and letting it serve you in in creative purposes and like projects and work related things um, but in other types of things it feels like the universe is saying like just sit back and let us do some of the work for you like let somebody do something for you instead this week um, and allow yourself to receive that um, because you you deserve it like this is is part of your your opportunity is to balance out this relationship between the yin and the yang um, and so in your receiving state you will be in the yin um, so I don't know if she's on here but hopefully if she is uh, she'll get that message and also that's a message for other people here if you feel like you can relate to that um, that's for you so that sums up today's training you guys thank you so much for being on here it's been a really cool experience uh just to serve you and to give you tools that will perhaps benefit you in your life or things that you can come back to in your own time when you're by yourself um and you know know that you're not alone in this journey and that we have each other and that we have um the power of technology and synchronicity but we also have the power of our own minds to um to change things in our lives and to heal our hearts and to really like, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but it's an opportunity for us to know that we are okay. Um, and that if we reach out, you know, there the universe will answer, the universe will support us, the universe will guide us. Um, and so there's a lot of great beauty in that. And um, something that I really value and appreciate a lot is, is people who, continuously remind me that there are angels on this earth that walk the earth uh, who who want me to be happy um, and so wherever you're going today with this experience after doing the meditation and and, and doing um, the heart healing uh, definitely drink some water like drink plenty of water so that you're flushing out your system and also like ground a little bit Maybe burn some Palo Santo if you have one or, or burn a candle um, or eat something that's really like grounding for the earth because um, it's healthy to do that and also just like brings you back to your core, like brings you back to being in your body. Um, and yes, and that's that. So um, everyone, thanks for being on here. This is such a great joy. If you're still on um, and you're interested in